It's a little slow, but it tastes nice. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Triple Frontier, a new film by J.C. Chander, who some of you may know directed All Is Lost with Robert Redford, or my first introduction to him, which was A Most Violent Year, also starring Oscar Isaac. This film is about a bunch of, a group of highly trained special operatives who have retired or gone on to do different things, and Oscar Isaac comes in and says, hey, I know where the super dirty, awful, evil drug lord is, and I know where all of his money is, and we can steal it. So it's essentially a heist movie set in a drug cartel world with special operative guys. And the one thing I will definitely say is that if this was an actually a true story, I could almost believe it. It's written by Mark Bowl, who's done a bunch of uh, military-esque films in the last little while, one of them being The Hurt Locker. and just how the film plays out there are some predictable moments there are some kind of cliched moments but i could almost see this as a realistic event something that could have happened just how everything plays out because it's not a big bombastic sort of action movie it's a tense film and everything that plays out is sequestered from what you would normally expect in a movie like this so i actually did enjoy that aspect even if it did drag a little bit the film starts off with them kind of introducing each other. We get to know these characters. We get to understand their grievances, their issues, their reasons why they want to do this job. And then once the film starts with the heist, the heist is very, very well done. And it's at this point you notice just how well shot this movie is. This is an incredibly beautiful looking movie, especially when it goes to South America. And the heist is pretty cool. Admittedly, it doesn't go the way you would think it would. Um, but then we see aspects of greed and uh, wanting to better themselves, taking over from what their original ideal was. And then it starts to conflict with their original ideas of patriotism. And as the film progresses, we see this kind of disconnect and this uh, falling apart of the group. And admittedly, there is one part that I actually did this. However, the film drags. It is a very slow pace. Again, because this is kind of set as what would happen if this was a real operation, the film really starts to slow down. It's essentially a road trip halfway through this film. And while I did enjoy the character interactions, like this film has a solid crew of actors. It's a very good cast there's not much that happens and after a while you can only like the pretty shots for so long until you start to realize that you, nothing's really happening and the ending of the film is not exactly resounding it's a little cliched like you've seen this ending before and it's unfortunate because again the cast the director and just the concept sounds really cool but it falls into that cliche of Netflix movies being meh. And that's essentially what this movie is. It's a well-made movie, but it's a well-made meh movie. It's not exactly the most entertaining thing. I would maybe watch the heist part again, just so I could watch that in 4K again. Um, but otherwise, I, I really don't care if they do anything with this movie. Because they, they kind of give the idea that they might continue it slightly. I think what they were trying to do is make a heist version of like the Sicario films. There's definitely a lot of inspiration from the Sicario movies in this, but it doesn't have that same gripping tension and that world of seediness. There is a dark place and a dark atmosphere in this film, but it's not used to its full extent. And speaking of that, they had Disaster Piece as the composer for this film. You know, the guy who basically made It Follows as good as it is. And they don't let him do anything. There's so much licensed music in this film. And there's a lot of points where I'm thinking, oh, cool, Disaster Piece is going to do some music. And then all of a sudden, 
CCR comes on. Maybe it's not what JC Chander wanted. Maybe there was some disagreements because I don't understand why they had him because he's useless, essentially. They, he doesn't do anything that differentiates himself from any other composer. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna give Triple Frontier a four out of seven. It's a commendable movie. It has some interesting moments. It has a good, realistic, believable tone, but it does drag. It does have some shortcomings, and there are some wasted opportunities, like Disaster Piece. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.